The final breath of a giant are you ready for what may unfold in our skies? A colossal star is nearing its dramatic finale, and across the cosmos, it feels as though everything is holding still, waiting. The star is Betelgeuse, a red supergiant blazing in the constellation Orion. For generations, it has burned bright over Earth, a watchful sentinel in the winter sky. But recently, something shifted. Betelgeuse dimmed, suddenly and significantly, as though something deep inside had stirred. Telescopes around the globe turned to observe it, and astronomers asked the same question. Is this the beginning of the end? Some believe its death may be imminent. Others suggest it's merely entering the turbulent final phase of its life. But what's certain is this was no ordinary dimming. Known formally as Alpha Orionis, Betelgeuse is among the largest and most luminous stars visible from Earth. If it replaced our Sun, its outer surface would extend beyond Jupiter's orbit. Over a thousand times wider than the Sun and more than 100,000 times brighter, its brilliance comes with a cost. The larger the star, the faster it consumes its fuel. And when that fuel is gone, a violent end awaits. In 2019, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope captured something extraordinary, Betelgeuse had released a vast cloud of superheated gas. It was a surface eruption of massive scale, never before recorded in a red supergiant. This outburst hurled an enormous plume of plasma into space, hundreds of billions of times more powerful than solar flares from our sun. That ejected material veiled the star, dimming its glow. It wasn't the final explosion, but perhaps a warning shot. A signal of what lies ahead. Located approximately 724 light years from Earth, though its distance is uncertain due to its turbulent outer layers, Betelgeuse is far enough away to pose no direct danger. But when it does explode, it will not be quiet. Its supernova will be a spectacle visible from Earth. For weeks, it will rival the full moon in brightness, casting shadows at night. It will appear even in daytime skies, a second sun rising over our planet. The sight will be unforgettable. Yet, despite its power, Betelgeuse's supernova won't harm Earth in the traditional sense. It's simply too far away. Still, supernovae don't just emit visible light. They release X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic radiation, forces that can ripple across space long after the flash fades. If a supernova occurs close enough, these emissions could erode a planet's ozone layer, allowing lethal ultraviolet radiation from its host star to reach the surface. This could trigger extinction events over long timescales. Fortunately, Betelgeuse lies well outside that danger zone. However, some types of supernovae, particularly those surrounded by dense clouds of matter, can generate focused bursts of X-rays that travel for hundreds of light years. When a shockwave collides with this material, it can create radiation intense enough to affect distant planetary atmospheres months or even years after the explosion. Long after the light is gone, cosmic rays may still be on their way, creeping through space, silent and unstoppable. On Earth and even on the Moon, traces of the rare isotope Iron-60 have been found, suggesting that a nearby supernova occurred in the not-too-distant past. That ancient explosion left its fingerprints here. And Betelgeuse is a reminder of how dynamic and dangerous the universe can be. It also challenges our ideas of the so-called galactic habitable zone. Too close to the center of the galaxy, and supernovae are too frequent for life to endure. Too far, and there aren't enough heavy elements to build complex chemistry. Life, it seems, can only emerge within a narrow band, sheltered, yet rich in the raw ingredients of biology. Earth is balanced on that knife edge. So when Betelgeuse does finally collapse, what will we witness? It will begin with a piercing point of light in the sky, bright enough to be seen in daylight. At night, it will cast shadows without the aid of the moon. All over the planet, people will look up in awe, and maybe a little fear. A dying giant will light up the heavens. For over a year, its light will linger, fade, and evolve. It will become a legend told across generations. Then, slowly, the brightness will wane. A glowing shell of gas and dust, the supernova remnant, will remain for decades, visible to the naked eye. Eventually, even that will fade. 
But the story will not end there. Because when a star dies, it leaves behind more than light. It leaves behind the raw material for new worlds. The explosion will send a wave of energy surging outward at thousands of kilometers per second, sweeping up the interstellar medium. It will carry carbon, oxygen, iron, silicon, the elements of planets, oceans, and living things. We are, in a very real sense, made from the ashes of stars. So Betelgeuse's death will not be a final. In the aftermath of Betelgeuse's explosive death, a strange and exotic object may emerge from the chaos. A neutron star, the collapsed core of the once mighty supergiant. Though only about the size of a city, its density defies comprehension. A single teaspoon of neutron star matter would weigh more than Mount Everest, more than every skyscraper in Manhattan combined. This is matter crushed to its limit, atoms squeezed so tightly that electrons and protons fuse into neutrons. It's no longer ordinary matter, it's nuclear matter, the same material that makes up atomic nuclei, now forming a stellar corpse. And it doesn't rest in silence. This remnant may spin at incredible speeds, hundreds of rotations per second, its magnetic field so intense that it funnels streams of radiation from its poles. These beams sweep across the cosmos like the rotating beam of a lighthouse. From Earth, we would observe it as a pulsar, a rhythmic ticking, a cosmic heartbeat echoing through the dark. The universe's most precise timekeepers, pulsars beat with unwavering regularity, sending signals across the void. Yet, there's another possibility, one even more extreme. If the core of Betelgeuse is massive enough, not even neutron degeneracy pressure, the force that holds a neutron star up, can resist the pull of gravity. The collapse will continue. The core will vanish from the observable universe, leaving behind a singularity, a black hole. Not a glowing remnant, but a shadow. A scar on the fabric of space-time. Invisible, silent, yet gravitationally powerful. Around it, space will curve infinitely inward. Time, as we know it, will cease to function. Not even light can escape its grip. And so, the death of Betelgeuse may give birth to one of the most enigmatic objects in existence. A black hole, the end state of massive stars and perhaps the gateway to deeper physics yet unknown. Whatever form its remnant takes, pulsar or black hole, one thing is certain, humanity will be watching. Across the globe, Earth's most advanced instruments will tune in. Optical telescopes will observe the expanding shell of debris, the supernova remnant, glowing in intricate patterns, painting the night sky with the echoes of destruction. Infrared detectors will follow the warmth left behind, revealing swirling dust clouds sculpted by stellar winds. Space-based X-ray observatories will peer into the heart of the explosion, capturing the shock waves and hot spots invisible to human eyes. Radio telescopes will listen to the static hum, the whispers of particles moving at near light speed. This won't be a moment, it will be an era. For years, perhaps decades, we'll monitor the remnant. We'll trace its evolution. We'll study how the explosion reshapes its environment, compressing nearby gas clouds, possibly triggering the birth of new stars. We may even detect gravitational waves, subtle ripples in space-time, generated by the core's final collapse. And as we observe this process, we won't just be witnessing destruction. We'll be witnessing creation. Because a supernova does not simply mark an end. It fertilizes the galaxy. The elements forged in Betelgeuse's core, iron, calcium, carbon, are the very atoms that build worlds. That build life. That build us. Our blood carries the iron once born in ancient stellar hearts. Our bones contain calcium made in fiery stellar cores. Every breath we take is a whisper from a long dead star. So when Betelgeuse breathes its last, it won't just be a chapter close. It will be a seed scattered. In the silence that follows the blast, a vast cloud of glowing gas will begin to drift through interstellar space. Slowly, over centuries, it will cool, contract, and mingle with other clouds. And somewhere, someday, those atoms may gather into a new star system. Perhaps one with rocky planets. Perhaps one with oceans. Perhaps one where life will rise again, 
built from the ashes of a forgotten giant. And that's the legacy of Beetlejuice. Its death will illuminate our skies, transform our understanding, and echo through time. It will remind us of the cycles that shape the cosmos, the endless dance of birth, death, and rebirth. And long after its light has faded, its story will live on, in science, in memory, and perhaps in the living matter it helped create.